Colin. And I'm Connor Smith. And we would like to welcome you to Youth Sunday at Faith United Methodist Church. Come on in. Good morning, and welcome to Faith United Methodist Church. My name is Mike Cassidy. I am the pastor here. It is my joy, my privilege, and my honor to welcome you into worship on this, the 10th Sunday after Pentecost. I'm so excited for you to join us today. This is our Youth Sunday. So we're going to have just a parade of young people leading us in prayer and the call to worship, leading us in song and in scripture reading. And we're going to take a moment later in the service to celebrate some of our high school graduates and a college graduate. And then one of the best things of all is one of our very own young people, a senior in high school, Gabe Keaton. He's going to bring us a beautiful message today. He preached it last night at our outside service and he's preaching this morning, 10 o'clock, in our inside and he's preaching here online with you all as well i know you're gonna have a just a blessed experience today with us i'm so thankful that you're here as we gather together as we worship together i'm gonna send it over to our kids they're gonna open us in prayer and get this started thank you so much for taking the time and worshiping with us here at faith united methodist church i'm Peyton stone i'm going into 10th grade and i'm going to be bringing you the opening prayer the night has passed and the day lies before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. Grant to us, Lord, we pray, the Spirit to think and always do those things that are right, that we who cannot exist without you may by you be enabled to live according to your will through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. At this time, I want to invite you to greet one another in the comment section below. Take a moment to type these words, SOLD OUT, in all caps, and let us know that you're here with us today. And now let us prepare our hearts and mind for worship as we welcome in the light of Christ. I invite you to join in the call to worship and sing with us. The words and lyrics will be on your screen. Please join me by sharing in the call to worship on your screen. We praise you, Lord. We trust in you and will not be afraid. You, Lord, are our strength and our defense. You are our salvation. Let us sing for joy to the Lord, for he has done glorious things. salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. The Lord, the Lord himself, is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. With joy he will draw water from the wells of salvation. Yeah. 
junior at Grand Valley High School, and I'd like to lead us in prayer. Let us pray. Your words of light and hope flood into our lives, O oh God. We have lived in darkness and despair and fear, doubt and strife. But on this day of celebration, you remind us that we are marked by you to witness your light of new hope. You have called us here by name, and you are with us always. And so, we have brought forth before your names in situations which concern us, people who face illness and grief, whose lives are torn by poverty, war, sickness, addiction, and hopelessness. We ask for your loving mercy on them, O Lord. Heal them and bind up their wounds. Help us to be people who are ready to be involved in ministries of peace and justice and grace bringing the light of your hope to those who dwell in the darkness and despair. We ask this in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray these words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Hi, my name is Hayden Leeds. Thank you so much for the ways that you give to the congregation and support ministries such as our youth program. We appreciate all of you. If you would like to give today, please follow the link in the description for this worship video. And now we ask that you take a few moments to give your heart and your life once again to Jesus Christ, the author of our salvation. Thank you.
everybody. It's good to be with you on this Sunday morning. And today I wanted to talk to you real quick about strength and how God gives us strength. Um, we have been talking this week in Bible school about God gives us strength, so trust God. That was our Bible verse for the week. And to go along with that, we have a friend, our friend Chase here, who is a leopard. And a really good way that Chase reminds us about strength is if you think about a leopard, you think about them having a lot of strength. They're really strong and they can run fast. They can kind of do whatever they want in the wilderness because they're so strong and dominant, but they're also pretty quiet creatures. They don't make a lot of noise. You might not hear them when they're coming. So they're strong, but they're quiet. And so a good way that Chase reminds us of the strength that God gives us is sometimes he gives us that strength in a really peaceful way that's like an inner strength. We don't have to be loud and you know, lift weights or do things like that to have strength. Sometimes it's just the strength that God puts in our hearts. So this week I was going to challenge you to find your inner strength and your inner peace and quiet and share that with people around you. So some good ways you could do that. Praying is such a great way to have a peaceful, strength that you share with others. You can pray in your head. You can say it quietly to yourself. Another good way is just to maybe give a hug. You don't have to say or talk at all when you're giving hugs, but it's a really good way to share some love and give other people strength. Um, another way might be to write some kind words and leave it for somebody in your family or a friend or a neighbor to give them some strength to have a good day or have a good week. So if you think about it this week, think about our friend Chase and how he's super strong, but he is super quiet and has strength. And that will help remind you of the strength that God gives to you. Thank you so much, Katie. That was wonderful. We've had so much fun at Vacation Bible School, right, Chase? That's right. Now we want to head over to Randy Draper, Coach Draper. He's our youth director, and he sat down earlier this week on Zoom and chatted with some of our graduates, and we want to just share what they had to say and what's up in their life with you all at home and in your life. So, Randy, I'm going to send it on over to you. Thank you. Welcome. We're here with recent Kansas State University graduate Alex Burroughs. Alex, thanks for joining us tonight. Yeah, I'm glad to be here. They, uh, why don't you catch us up on what you're doing now, kind of what short-term plan is. As we know, we were talking about plans are interesting right now, but if it goes your way, what, what, what do you got? Yeah, um, so yeah, I graduated um, with my degree in computer science in May. Um, and the original plan was for me to spend the summer overseas in Central Asia. Um, and yeah, that didn't really work out. Um, you know, things in the world happened and they made that call pretty early on in April, I think, to um, cancel that. And I think God has really been at work in my heart and my life as, you know, the summer has gone on. Um, and he turned that, um, you know, missed opportunity into another opportunity for me to spend this fall semester overseas. Um, and so for a while, the plan was that I would spend this fall semester overseas um, doing web design um, as a kind of a platform for missions um, out in a different area in, in Central Asia. Um, however, right now, um, it doesn't look like I'll be able to leave on time. Um, I think one of the cool things that God has done is he um, blessed me with an opportunity to spend, you know, this fall semester in Wichita doing um, doing some of that web design stuff. So I'll still be partnered with the same people um, working on the same projects, but doing it here instead of overseas um, using kind of what I spent all four years of college studying to um, kind of help them um, in their business and then in how they reach the community around them. Um, and I'm super excited about that. Um, and eventually the goal is that, you know, if in a couple months things start to get better, um, that, um, yeah, I would be able to, head on over and still spend, you know, two or three months on, on site if um, that's kind of what God has in store. Um, 
right now it's been a whole lot of waiting, um, but I am really excited for the path that God has set before me. And yeah, um, when I come back, I think the plan is just to uh, kind of stay in the area, look for a job and hopefully web design um, somewhere in the KC area. Just um, spend a couple of years just, um, yeah, just learning and growing, um, planting my roots in a church and yeah, just starting the next step of life. Yeah. Then after that couple of years, you have like a plan for like what 20 years looks like. If, if it all rolls your way, what, what does it look like? Oh man. Yes. Um, so I don't know exactly when or how or what, but I think God has very clearly put it on my heart um, to go overseas long-term. Um, I know for a while I need to be here. I need to take care of loans. I need to take care of just some of that practical stuff um, so that when I do get the opportunity to go, I can. Right. Um, but yeah, for now, um, yeah, going to be working and be paying that off and then Hopefully, um, I think God has made it pretty clear to me that part of going over overseas is using my knowledge in computer science and like the stuff that I've studied and the stuff that I'm passionate about as a platform to help reach others. Um, again, I don't know how exactly. Um, I don't know how long. I don't know kind of at what stage of life, whether that's in five years, 10 years, whether that's with a family or whether it's alone. Um, he hasn't made that clear yet. Um, what he has made clear is that it's not my plan. It's his. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, no matter which way it goes, um, I'm excited for the road ahead. And I know that he who began a good work in me is going to complete it. So and we're here with uh, our recent high school graduate, Alex Clements. How you doing, Alex? Pretty good. And you? I'm doing well. They, uh, once you let people know what you've been doing the last few months, is it's been a different time. Uh, what have you been getting to do? Um, right after the quarantine started, um, I actually was about to start working for an internship I'd gotten underneath my dad. So I went in for the first day and got my stuff. Never went. Back. So that took up a lot of time in quarantine. Um, I've gotten to house it for a few of my friends. We went to Colorado. For a few weeks and got to hike around and see some beautiful scenery um yeah it's been a good time okay they uh with uh i know you've got college plans what once you uh, tell us your short term shorter term four to five year plan we as we've learned plans are always interesting right now but if things go well what's going to happen um i was originally going to go to missouri state but um, I'm, I've kind of decided to just take my A plus money, which allows me to go to, it'll allow me to go to MCC here, Metropolitan Community College for free for two years. Um, using that, I'm going to get, I think, an associate's degree in um, business management or administration. And then I don't know where I'll go after that because it just kind of depends on what's happening in terms of COVID and the universities. But after that, I'll transfer to a four-year university and hopefully get either my master's or, I don't know, either a four-year or a master's, and then hopefully go into the workforce. I don't know where I'm going, though, in terms of that. Though. Right. The, uh, do you have, like, 20 years from now, this is what you hope, or do you think that's just going to – you're going to find that? Yeah, uh, yeah. I see this whole, like, college thing as, like, an exp- – like, originally I was seeing it as just, like, a way to figure out what I want to do with life yeah. and, like – taking classes and seeing what I want to do. So I just hope that doing the co- doing community college and just somehow find something that I want to do later on. Oh, and help it all. Well, when you see, you'll take that one class, you'll take something that it'll move, it'll move you. It'll hit you. And you think, okay, that's it. All right. I'm with Tanner Houston, a uh, recent high school graduate. First of all, Tanner and I go way back. Tanner, give me, give me your favorite. Give me a, a middle school PE memory. Well, there was this one year, I think it was uh, seventh grade, we were playing kickball in the gymnasium against the girls. Not, I don't know if we were against the girls or not, but I remember my first home run of hitting the wall all the way back towards the, <laughs> the doors. I thought that was pretty dang hey, 
Uh, we all remember the home runs. All right. That's, <laughs> oh, yeah. that's, that's great. They, uh, what, uh, what kind of, what do you do? What are your interests when you're not in school? Not when you weren't in school, what are your interests? What do you like to do? Well, um, I've always been a person of work and, uh, I've always enjoyed working. I learn at an early age and get out there and get it done now. So later in life I can be, relaxing and doing whatever I need to do or doing whatever I want to do. So very good. They, uh, what, um, what, what are you doing right now then during this time? What are you doing? Well, right now I'm a uh, fleet manager of a decking and fencing company, uh, and going to welding school. So I'm working full time and then going to welding school at nights. Well then what does the next, uh, you'd like for the next, several years what kind what kind of plan do you see you know now we all know sometimes our plans don't always work you know we have different yeah. plans given to us but what's kind of your plan on what's what can go 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 on well um i originally i i just got back from the railroad and uh to come home for welding school and i met a guy uh doing fencing and decking started working with him and uh the guy he's getting older and he's wanting to sell his business. Uh, so I'm taking that as my primary option of income uh, later in life of taking over his business, buying him out, but you can never rely on one source. So welding school right now is my backup plan. And that's, that's where I'm at. All right. We're here with recent high school, <laughs> Kelsey Wade. How you doing, Kelsey? Good. They, uh, hey, we, why don't you catch, catch us up a little bit? What have you been doing the last, last few months? Um, well, I've been working two jobs. I work um, full-time at Primetime in Blue Springs with the kids, and then I work part-time at Custard's. So I'm busy pretty much all the time. <laughs> they, uh, Every day. <laughs> I know you're getting ready to go to go to college. Why don't you talk a little bit about your your plans coming? Yeah, I'm going to Northwest Missouri State University in Maryville, and um, I'm going to major in elementary education. Awesome. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much all I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. uh, maybe I, I might I'm going to rush and maybe join the sorority there. But that's all that I have on plan there. <laughs> okay. Well, very good. And and we talked today. Everything is on schedule to open. Yeah, they haven't changed. They changed our move-in dates to a whole weekend, so it's like August fourteenth through the sixteenth. But I still move in the fifteenth, which is the Saturday that we were originally supposed to move in. So okay. still doing that. All right. Very good. And then, <laughs> uh, if. Um, as we've learned anything here recently, having plans is interesting anyway, but uh, yeah. in, like long term after you get out of college, what, what do you hope happens? Um, I hope to get on to a good school district. I don't know where yet because obviously I don't know, you know, where I'll be, where I'll be wanting to live. Like whenever I graduate, you know, things change and stuff like that, as I've seen with my sister because she's like, you know wanting to live in totally different states all the time. So I'm like, I don't know where I'm going to live. You know, maybe it's here, maybe it's somewhere else. But um, hopefully go into, like, a good school district and then um, teach kids. I am I really want second grade. I don't okay, know why I, was I ask like you that age. have a great <laughs> level of preference. <laughs> okay. I, with my degree, it'll be first through sixth. Yeah. So I can teach any of those grades. But I like the age of second grade, like what they teach, and I like um, – just that age, you know, like eight-year-olds. I just like them <laughs> the best. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you know, when you get into student teaching and all that, you mm -hmm. yeah. know so much, but you're, you're doing so much with kids right now. Uh, yeah. You get a pretty good idea of what you want to do. But Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's fantastic. They, uh, it, is a, it is a great profession. They, it yeah. is a great profession. But, uh, I'm excited. Awesome. Yeah, you'll be awesome. Uh, these... These four are really um, special people, and I, I look forward to seeing what happens for them and the different routes they, that they go. But there's a, there's a lot of bright futures here, and let's give them one last round of applause for these four. The sermon tonight, I, I'm just really excited about this. He, uh, Gabe 
Keaton will be a senior uh, next year at Grain Valley High School, and um, he's been really uh, a key part of our, our youth group. And when the guys have been on Zoom, uh, he's been the one bringing our scripture each week and talking about it. And I, I just think, uh, you know, my word when I describe him is just incredibly thoughtful. He's a very thoughtful person, and I, I'm really interested to, to hear the message tonight. Let me introduce Gabe Keaton. Thank you, Coach. Hello, everyone. Everybody can hear me all right? Good. I first want to start off by saying thank you for attending this youth service. I also want to thank Coach Draper, uh, Mrs. Draper, Pastor Mike, the youth, and everyone who has helped to make this service possible. My name is Gabe Keaton. For those of you, of you who might not know me, I've been a member here at Faith since my confirmation in 2015, and I've been attending since even before then. Today I want to talk about and reflect on the struggles that are affecting the world around us. It has been a crazy five months. And it seems like it's not going to stop there. I believe that before I can discuss this topic, it is vital that I read you some scripture. The scripture I chose is from the book of Isaiah, Specifically, Isaiah chapter 43, verses 1 through 3. The verses read, Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. A little bit of context about the book of Isaiah. Isaiah is regarded as one of the greatest writing prophets of the Old Testament. Jesus even preached from Isaiah quite often. Isaiah predicted that the Israelites would be held captive in Babylon, but through the redemption power of God, the Israelites would be redeemed and return home. This is very similar to how God rescued the Israelites from Egypt previously in the book of Exodus. In this first part of chapter 43, Isaiah is calling for the Israelites to be faithful to God in order for them to be delivered from captivity in Babylon. This is one example in the Bible of how God tests his people's faith. I think that what we are dealing with now is in the world is also an example of how God tests our own faith. We are facing the uncertain just as the Israelites did. I would like to briefly reflect on an experience I had last year. As many of you may know, last year I had three knee surgeries. As a young 17 year old, that's something that not many of us should or would want to experience. I can recall a specific moment during an appointment with my physical therapist where he said to me, I know you didn't ask for any of this to happen, but we will get through it together. This was after my first surgery. What my therapist said resonated with me for quite a while. It made me realize that God wanted me to slow down and take a moment to evaluate my faith. Later on, I would end up having a second surgery, which I believe was a true test of my faith. Immediately after the surgery, I remember my dad telling me that I would need to have a third. Now, I don't know if that's the best thing I should have known, coming out of surgery in the recovery room, but at least I knew early on. This was when I started asking questions. Why is this happening to me? What did I do to deserve this? Surely enough, God works in mysterious ways. He made me realize that I shouldn't be worrying about my condition. Rather, I should be taking action despite having a setback. God started to make me more of a servant after I put even more of my faith in him. I started to volunteer at St. Mary's Hospital, which was an amazing experience even though I had to help patients and family members while being on crutches. In our youth group, I became the scripture reader, which encouraged me to find verses and spend time on my own reading God's word. Just like in Isaiah where God summons the Israelites by name, I know that I was summoned by name to volunteer at the hospital and share scripture. I truly believe that as a result of the struggles I faced because of these surgeries, my faith in God was strengthened immensely. 
Similarly to the Israelites and their faith in God leading them out of Babylon, my faith in God strengthened myself as a person, healing me completely. The faith that I had then, the faith that I had strengthened in God is what overcame my fears, worries, and doubts. This same faith that I had then, I believe, continues to develop and strengthen now. We as Christians are facing some of the hardest times of our lives now more than ever. I think if we just put a little more faith in God and let Him do the rest, we just might see improvements in our lives. Throughout these past couple of months, our youth group has been meeting on Zoom. We've been focusing on the idea and importance of living by faith, not by sight. I think we can all agree that it's hard to give up that control to God. We want to control almost every aspect of our lives. As Coach would put it, sometimes we end up swinging at air. We think we know the way things should go, but we don't. God is the only one who is in control. Sometimes the struggles we face may seem like they are too hard. This may lead to a struggle within one's own faith. In Matthew chapter 17, verse 20, God tells us that even if we have so little faith, as small as a mustard seed, we can move mountains. Imagine what our faith would look like if we let God grow that mustard seed. There's a lot going on in the world today that causes fear and anxiety for many of us. COVID-19, social injustice, changes in employment, school starting back up, just to name a few are at the forefront of our minds. No one has ever asked for these struggles. God is always with each and every one of us. In regard to Isaiah chapter 43, verses 1 through 3, God says, Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name, you are mine. What we have to do, however, is to put our faith in Him, just like the Israelites did. We have to trust in God that He will take control of the hard situations that we deal with and transform them into positive outcomes. I don't think that God tests us without reason. Through our struggles during these times, we can reflect on our own faith and let it strengthen. Almost 2,500 years ago, God got his people out of Babylon and returned them to the land of Israel. God saved his people back then. Why can't he do the same now? The same calling that Isaiah gave his people from God is the same calling that we can hear now. We just have to put our faith in him and listen. If I were to stand here a year ago, you probably would have seen me on crutches or maybe any, even in a wheelchair. It was through my own faith in God, prayers from you all, some physical therapy, and a little bit of chili, thank you Shauna, that I've been healed. I believe that I'm an example of how God uses people through their struggles to come out of the other end stronger than before. Two other people that I think of who have dealt with tremendous struggles are Chris and Shauna. For those of you who don't know, Chris and Shauna dealt with kidney surgery together. Chris needed a kidney transplant, so Shauna willingly gave up one of hers so that Chris would be healed. They dealt with this struggle together, knowing that God was with them. You can see that they've come out of these struggles stronger than before. I was told not too long ago this quote, the hotter the fire, the stronger the steel. For myself, Chris, and Shauna, I think that we have all walked through the fire without being burned. The fire was hot, but it made us stronger. Our own faith in God and His own faith in us makes us stronger through our struggles. God adheres to our faith and sticks with us every step of the way. Let me repeat that. God is with us every step of the way.
thank you again for choosing to join us for our worship today at Faith United Methodist Church. We pray that you might find your place, your purpose, and your passion here with us. As now, as you go out into the world, remember that you are precious in God's sight. He has called you by name. And may God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit walk with you always. Amen.